Over the past few years, we've witnessed many threats to artists' rights, livelihood, integrity, and mental health. Remember when everyone was talking about NFTs and how they were the future, inevitable, progress, how they were going to liberate artists and how everyone could make a lot of money off of them. But what we saw was countless instances of art theft, scams, and it's itsy, tiny, teeny, weeny percentage of users made any money off everyone they scammed. Now people can see them for the sham they were all along and only the biggest idiots and coped out fools still think they're the future. Not even a year later, we got hit with the AI boom. Welcome back everyone, my name is Gamma Trap, one word, and I'm a professional illustrator. I've worked with clients from game studios to published authors, and now I like to spend what free time I have teaching others about the art industry and how to make cool stuff for their own projects. So with credentials like that, you can be sure I have something of a unique perspective on this whole AI thing. There are tons of myths and misunderstandings about this whole process. So let me give you like a quick rundown on what's been going on. AI generated images have been a thing for several years at this point, but lately there's been a rise in terms of technology and a decline in terms of ethics. Essentially, someone developed a program to scrub several of the largest online image banks like Getty and ArtStation, to name a few, for untold millions of images. These images all belong to their respective rights holders, but that didn't stop the AI developers from taking them and using them anyway. They then fed these stolen images into their software, which scanned them, gave them tags like Apple, uh, Red, Stem, Leaf, etc., then broke them down into little pixelated noise, then stacked the noise back together using those tags to make what it thinks, humans think, an Apple looks like, for example. Obviously, this is incredibly controversial and the courts are now getting involved because it's such a huge issue. Some call it piracy. Some call it the future. So far, they've ruled that any image generated by this software learning isn't allowed any copyright. So if someone types in some words and software spits out some pixels, that image is allowed to be used by anyone for anything. No crying and trying to claim credit, no suing someone because they took it and put it on a shirt to make money off of it, nothing. AI generated images belong to nobody. And you could thank this little guy for that. It's a funny story and you're more than welcome to search AI monkey copyright, but let's talk about what it means for artists currently in the industry and new artists looking to join the industry. Is my job at stake? Are artists doomed? Will we finally have to get a real job? Will AI put us out of business? Short answer, big no, tiny yes. With an asterisk, question mark, Lamal, but not really. Some people have opted to use an AI generator when they previously would have had to pay an artist for some things. But you need to look at the phases of a client. A client will have an idea, then try to explain that idea as best as possible to an artist. Then the artists make the client's idea to every specification the client asks for. Then the client pays the artist and compliments them on their cool YouTube channel and rings the bell and subscribes and all that fun stuff. AI software can only do that second step. To some, this is fine. This is this is all they're looking for. This is all they need. They, they aren't looking to make anything really like overly specific. They don't really care too much about colors and, and, and details like fingernails and fun little like, does it look good? You know, they don't really care about all that stuff. To some, this is all they need. The AI cannot make specific changes to everything in a piece to make it look professional and put together. It can only make things that look kind of okay. So when a client wants something made to specifications, they either have to draw it themselves, uh, accept the eldritch abomination spat out by the AI or pay an artist. Let me give you a real world example here uh, that actually happened to me that I've actually, at me personally, have had an experience with. An art director for a smaller studio sent me a pitch, and this is just a breakdown of what they have in mind for the project that they want me to work on. They spent hours in one of these softwares trying to find the right combination of words to use and just rolling the dice that it would spit out something that what they were kind of going for. Just typing, refreshing, typing, refreshing, typing, refreshing, trying to get this thing that I'm not going to go into you know too much detail on because it might <laughs> make some people kind of upset. I, I try to be nice here, but, <laughs> but the point is they learned that it would have saved them so much time if they just gave me the keywords and have me draw the thing from scratch. Studios aren't in the business of wasting time and resources. I mean, most of them, I should say. <laughs> 
I've spoken to several art directors and none in major studios would even dream of wasting time with AI when they have a team of some of the most skilled artists currently on the market at their disposal, either in-house or, or contract like freelance stuff like me. I also heard the argument from some other artists about using it as a starting point. If you are an artist who's seen these things, I'm, I'm almost certain you have even had this brief thought. You know, if you just use it as a starting point, just pop in a couple of ideas and have it just kick you out something to just have on the canvas. Just use it for some composition inspiration, some color palette inspiration, maybe just even just a mood. But then I'm sure you've realized very quickly after either trying it or giving it some serious thought that it's a, a pretty bad idea. <laughs> When you do this, you learn nothing. You waste so much time. It's it's too chaotic and wild to be used for photo bashing. And for painting, you end up making something that looks like nothing you'd actually paint naturally. It's so surreal, so strange, which I mean, some artists like like the challenge, you know, of painting something that they would normally not paint, which fair, it gives you a chance to really kind of experiment with that and like power to you, right? Power to you. And I'm, I'm personally, I'm not actually here to tell you one thing's bad or one thing's good. I'm just here to give you the perspective of the industry professional. Okay, that's it. That's all you can make your own decisions. You're you're a big you're a big boy, big girl. You're an adult. Prop maybe prop. I don't know, maybe probably. I've seen my analytics. I know most of y'all are adults. <laughs> Some kids, hi, hello, but most of them adults, you know, but I mean, it, it holds you back like a crutch. It establishes bad habits and, and you stop thinking in terms of creation. Instead, you start thinking about it in terms of alteration. You are then just editing something that something else kind of started with and made. If you want to do that, just take a picture with your phone or something and then paint over that. You'll have way more knowledge and way more educational value from painting on just a photo you took. Those are real things. The things around what you're working on has actual visual value to you. Something I've always said is human memory is flawed but every brushstroke is practice. So if you are practicing on this AI generated stuff, this weird abomination of like 15 fingers, three eyes, couple extra limbs, maybe these buildings don't make any sense. Great, uh, but you are practicing how not to paint hands, how not to paint eyes limbs, etc. You're practicing how not to paint these things. And it is so regressive for your progress, for your skill set. I've, I've also heard the argument of using an art program like Photoshop is just like using an AI. It's just a tool, bro. Have you have you seen those apps where you put like your selfie in and the AI messes with the image to make it look like gives it other colors, give a weird a filter to it, and maybe adds another person, maybe makes you look like you're wearing some other clothes or something like that. Uh, they have your face forever. That, that picture you put in their app to mess with, you're not you're not deleting that off their servers. You're not ever getting that back. Hopefully you didn't take any pictures of your kids. You'll have loads of AI bros, as a, we're starting to call them, saying it's the future, it's inevitable, it's progress, and it'll liberate artists. But all, all we're seeing is countless instances of art and photo theft, and it's tiny, itsy bitsy, teeny weeny percentage of people who are making a lot of money off everyone they've scammed. If you see something or someone treating artists like disposable pieces of meat to be taken advantage of, you should probably just stay well away from it. <laughs> that's 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 the, the, we've come full circle, okay? This is just another trend. It'll change, it'll morph, it'll be something else next year for sure. Absolutely, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, that's cool. I mean, like technology is, is moving forward as it does, but now courts are involved because they realized, oh, wait, musicians, writers, artists, human creativity, does that belong to its creators? Or do rights not mean anything? <laughs> that's, that's what all this is about. So the courts are gonna have to have a real fun time mulling over what the gray area should be. What, what's the limitations? Some think that, yeah, if you have a thought, that belongs to you. Some people seem to think, no, nah, you know what? If you have a cool creative thought, that I, I get to use that. I get that. That's me. That that belongs to me. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You know, we'll see. I, I'm looking forward to seeing this. We'll, we'll see. Getty Images, you know, like the big stock photo image place. They're suing the crap out of some of these major AI developers. And not to mention, like, all these other huge lawsuits are just starting to just boil up because they're realizing it's such a huge, huge issue. And you're messing with money. 
You're not just messing with like human creativity. I, I care that you're messing with human creativity, uh, but I'm not the one <laughs> that's going to really get in your way as much as the people who, who realize that you're messing with their money. So, I mean, good luck to you. Power to you. I, like I said, I look forward to seeing how this goes. I look forward to seeing where this will end up. We'll see, we'll see. It's just this huge blurry future, you know? Well, we'll see, hopefully things figure out and hopefully everyone you know, figures how to live with this stuff and learns from themselves and thinks about ethical ways to do things in the future. We'll see. I keep saying that. I, I'm, I'm, I mean it. I'm so, I'm so curious. I'm so curious. I've been curious. I've been watching this for like the past two, three years. <laughs> it's all coming together. But that's that's all for me on this one. Uh, <laughs> if you liked the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. If you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. I talk about art industry stuff and I make art tutorials. Thank you so much to my amazing patrons and Twitch subs who make all these videos possible. If you would like to join this list, the easiest way for you to probably do that is just to go to the link below to my Twitch, sub to the Twitch. I appreciate it. And um, <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.